Hello vinyl community. So another round of uh, musical explorations of mine. So I've shown this album already a couple of weeks ago just for some seconds after I bought it on a vinyl fair. This is Robert Palmer's third album from the 70s called Some People Can Do What They Like with a cheeky front cover showing Robert Palmer playing strip poker with a Playboy model actually. Yeah, but uh, this is actually a very nice album. I mean Robert Palmer in the 80s went for a little more straight uh, rock driven sound uh, and was very popular with it, but this is very funky. So this is sort of a 70s pop music that kind of borrows ideas from uh, from funk and disco and uh, and soul. So it's a very soulful album. And actually I've listened like three or four times to this now and uh, liked it every time a little more. So um, good album. Now the matter is a little more complicated with this album, which is Walt's Darling by Malcolm McLaren and the Bootsilla Orchestra. Um, this is uh, Malcolm McLaren's sort of uh, exit album out of the 80s. I think he put it out in 1989. Yes, uh, on CBS. Is it a good album? Well, it's it's Malcolm McLaren. <laughs> so <laughs> every, an every answer is somehow fitting. Um, yeah, there's something cool about it, but I mean, you have some amazing people playing on it. You have Jeff Beck playing on it, Bootsy Collins on bass. Uh, um, it's um, well, it's full of interesting sort of uh, synth pop ideas combined with some jazzy sensibility and some completely crazy bullshit that only Malcolm McLaren can come up with. Um, so it seemed like uh, there is a well, a programmatic theme on this album, which is his effort to combine, um, well, Johann Strauss's music, so Walt's music of the 19th century, with sort of a pumping, pulsating uh, dance music of the 80s, which... Uh, one could argue it just doesn't work and it's only obnoxious and uh, you wonder if the album wouldn't have been better without those samples sort of forced into the mix on several occasions. On the other hand it's a quite an original idea and you will probably not find anyone else who have tried to walk this way. So um, certainly get a plus for originality but it's not an album I would listen a lot. Um, wonderful piece of work is uh, this one, Pressure Points by Anne Clark. I think this was Anne Clark's fourth album. And uh, it came out in 1985 on Virgin. Now, um, it sounds a bit different than uh, the Anne Clark albums that came out in those years. Mostly because I think it's, it's correct to say that uh, the sound of early Anne Clark stuff is very much influenced by David Harrow, who was not only the synth player with Anne Clark, but also co-wrote uh, a huge chunk of the music. Now, this album here was all produced by John Fox of Ultra Vox's fame, who also played a lot of uh, keyboards here. So with the exception of one song, which is uh, co-recorded with David Harrow, this is quite a John Fox production. Um, so it sounds it sounds a bit uh, more dense and a little more in the direction of uh, of the contemporary pop music of that time. It's cool. It has a good cool sound. I like the album. I mean uh, the point is all mood because Anne Clark had massively changed her style and sound over the years so many times um, that. Uh, so this is an interesting look back how this was in 1985. I'm a big Anne Clark fan, that's certain. Um, this is a well-known album, Music for Films, Brian Eno. Um, now this came, this came out quite the same period of time when Eno released Before and After Science, which I've already shown, I don't know, a week ago. Um, so it's not only from the same period of time, 
it has a very similar productional approach um, in, this, in that sense that um, it's quite put together from all kind of sources. So there is again a lot of stuff recorded with uh, Robert Fripp. There is John Cale on it. You have uh, like Dave Mattex on percussions. There is again Phil Collins playing on it. But if you put it uh, next to Before and After Science, this is much more a sort of sound chasing album. A lot of much more ambient uh, oriented album and much less an album. Uh, exploring um, no wave post punk sound that uh, before and after science certainly represents. So I kind of like this one a bit better. There's no way around it. But that's me. So, and finally, check out this album. This is Shakti, their first album. Um, now, of course, it is called your Shakti with John McLaughlin, um, but that's basically how the record company. Um, just knew how to handle this. Um, it is, as a matter of fact, this is a super group, you could say. Um, I mean, if you turn around, um, you have the whole band here. Now, uh, everyone on this picture is, uh, and was even back in the day, known as a very popular and very uh, talented master of his craft. Um, so yeah, you have here Zakir Hussain, which is an excellent tabla player. Um, he later he later recorded a lot of stuff with Bill Laswell, also under the band moniker Tabla Beat Signs. Uh, here, of course, you have John McLaughlin who plays guitar on the album. Now this is uh, T H Vinya Kram, which was uh, which is uh, in India. He's um, I mean, he's a legendary uh, Gatam player. I know Gatam. Gatam is a uh, is an instrument that kind of looks like a like a pot, and you play it by drumming on it. I mean, that makes a wonderful sound. Well, of course, here on the right you have Lakshmi Narayana Shankar, uh, or short L Shankar, which later became quite famous for recording with Peter Gabriel. He's a violinist. So Shakti was this uh, fusion of uh, sort of Western jazz music inside of this environment of Indian uh, traditional sounds. And uh, as you can imagine, since basically everyone in this band is kind of regarded as a master of his own instrument, um, all hell breaks loose from the very first... Uh, uh, second. So uh, there are only three tracks on it and the whole album has been recorded basically in one run uh, during a concert in 1975. So it's a very interesting album and certainly quite influential on some later endeavors like Tabla Beat Science for example. Yeah, and finally two CDs coming both from the same project. Now this was recorded by one of my favorite Nuevo Flamenco bands uh, which is called Ketama. And this came in the mid 80s with the title Song High. So this is not just a Nuevo Flamenco album. It is a uh, transcontinental collaboration with Tomani Diabate, which is a very famous musician from Mali and who plays Kora. Now Kora is a instrument that uh, kind of looks like a giant lute combined with a cello, but actually it's a harp, harp-like instrument. And it has a very a lot of strings. Yeah, and I mean, Tomani Diabate is probably the most famous representant of this music and uh, he made it quite famous uh, abroad. Um, now there's Danny Thompson playing double bass on this album. Um, yeah, the sound is uh, an interesting mixture. Now, it's a known fact that flamenco mixes quite well with North African music or with uh, Roma music or even with Indian music. Uh, so there is something uh, in the substance of the music that uh, goes pretty well with other styles. And so there are so many uh, fusion projects uh, around the world that have somehow a base in flamenco. Yeah, uh, now 10 years later they 
did part two, Songhai two. Now the term Songhai is um, an expression on term that uh, is, ref is referring to the to the ethnicity of the West African people, mostly people, certain people from Mali and Mauritania and Niger, and uh, also this was the name of a of the of a of a Saharian empire until the 16th century. So there is some great sound. Um, so some of these songs are much deeper rooted in the sound of Sahara, of the of the music of Mali, while others are much more uh, sort of a typical fast uh, flamenco tracks. So if you see this somewhere, give it a try. If you like uh, uh, music uh, from different parts of the world, it's a nice experience. So. Uh, Songhai, one and two. So that's it for now. I hope you um, like some of the stuff I have shown you here. Um, it's basically just uh, what I'm listening through the day. So before I put it back on the shelf, I just make this video and uh, be done with it. <laughs> so uh, I hope uh, to see you again and um, have a nice day. Goodbye.